Hello everyone, welcome to Lighthouse Link number nine. Our previous episodes have mainly been about the life of Jesus, which are found in the New Testament part of the Bible. This time, the story is the Old Testament, near the beginning of the Bible. It is about a man called Noah. We can read about him in Genesis, which is the very first book of the Bible. So, as we are thinking about the beginning of the Bible, what a great cue for a song by John called Colours in Creation. Join in with the actions. Say to us each day, God loves us so much. Rainbows high above us are another way. God loves us so much. God loves us so much. A rainbow up above, the promise of His love. God loves us so much. His promises are true. God loves you. The forests over countries wide God loves us so much Purple is the thistle on a mountainside God loves us so much Pink it is the blossom on a springtime tree God loves us so much Blue it is the colour of the sky and sea God loves us so much loves us so much, a rainbow up above, the promise of his love, God loves us so much, his promises are true, God loves you. Orange is the color at the break of dawn, God loves us so much. The sun that keeps us nice and warm God loves us so much Red is a reminder Jesus died for me God loves us so much All these rainbow colors are for us to see God loves us so much God loves us so much A rainbow up above The promise of His love loves us so much, His promises are true, God loves you. God sent a rainbow in the sky so every girl and boy knows that water nevermore will totally destroy. Purple, orange, pink and green, yellow, red and blue Reminds us all, shows everyone God loves you! God loves us so much A rainbow up above, the promise of His love God loves us so much His promises are true God loves you God loves us so much of His love. God loves us so much. His promises are true. God loves you. Hello everyone. God looked at his amazing world. There were numerous plants and animals of so many different kinds everywhere. A long time had passed and it was the people that disappointed God. They were not living as he had intended. They were being selfish, caring more about themselves than other people, quarrelling, stealing from each other 
and fighting. They had totally forgotten God. He was beginning to be sorry that he'd ever made human beings. He decided to destroy everything by sending a big flood. Noah and his family worked hard and remembered to thank God for everything they had. God talked to Noah about the flood and explained his plan as he wanted to save Noah and his family. So God told Noah to build a, build a great big boat. It had to be big enough for Noah, his wife, their three sons, Ham, Shem and Japheth and their wives. And there had to be room for two of every kind of animal and bird you could possibly imagine. Also, they needed space to store food for everyone for a very long time. The boat would be called an ark. Noah listened carefully and with his sons he began to build the ark. People asked what he was doing. They would laugh when he told them that God was going to send a great flood. Building the ark was a long job. The people watched and thought he was crazy. He must be. Why else would you build a boat on dry land miles and miles from the nearest river or the sea? But Noah and his family got on with the task of building the enormous boat exactly as God had instructed them. God told him the measurements. He told him how to make it three stories high with one big door and to paint it on the outside with tar to make it watertight. Eventually it was finished. The animals and birds came one male and one female of every kind. They all went into the enormous boat, the ark. When they were all safely settled, Noah and his family went on board. God himself shut the door tightly behind them. The sky was dark with rain clouds and then the rain came down in torrents. The lightning flashed and the, the thunder crashed. The rivers overflowed and the water swirled around over all the land. Eventually, the water was deep enough to lift the ark and for it to float. The rain still came down and the floodwaters continued to rise and covered the tops of the highest mountains. Nothing outside the ark could survive. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Then at last, the rain stopped. The wind blew over the flooded world and ever so, ever so slowly, the water began to go down. Eventually, the ark came to rest on the top of a twin peaked mountain called Mount Ararat. This was five months after the rain had began to fall. The water continued to slowly, ever so slowly, go down. Then one day Noah opened the trap door and looked about and decided to send out a raven to explore. But it didn't come back. Later he sent out a dove but it couldn't find anywhere to settle so it flew back to the ark. A week later Noah let the dove go again. This time the dove flew back with an olive twig in its beak. When at last the land had dried up God told Noah that he could leave the ark and make a fresh start in a clean new world. 
what an exciting day. Noah and his family and all the animals left the ark. It was so good to be out in the, in the fresh air and on dry land. Noah built a, a huge pile of stones, placing one on top of the other. It was an altar. He made a burnt offering on it to God, thanking him for keeping them all safe. God promised Noah and his family that he would never destroy the whole earth again. God told Noah to look at the rainbow in the sky and that that was the sign for all to see forever that God would keep his promise. Isn't that a great story? And I hope that you'll enjoy, now that you've heard this story, when you see a rainbow in the sky. It'll remind you of God's promise to all his people and it's the same promise for you and me now that God will never again destroy the earth with a flood. It also reminds us that God is faithful and that he keeps his word and even when Noah looked a bit silly to the people around him because he was building a boat when he lived so far from any water and probably had never even seen the sea. But that God is faithful and he keeps his promises to us. And he did exactly what he told Noah he was going to do. Sue has a fun craft for you to try, but first of all, let's pray with Hannah. Let's pray together using our Cluedo prayer drill. One, two, three. Dear God, thank you for making our beautiful world and everything in it. I pray that you help us to look after it. Sorry that we do not always do the right thing. Sorry that we are sometimes unkind. Thank you, God that you are there to help us to make the right choices and that you always forgive us when we ask for it. Amen. Four. Hi everyone. Today we're going to be making a rain stick. There was so much rain in the story of Noah's Ark, wasn't there? And today we're going to do something a bit different and make something that sounds like rain. Listen to this and see what you think. Sounds a bit like the pitter patter of rain. Actually, depends on how we quite make this thing. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. Um, but I hope you have fun. You're going to need a few materials. You're going to need a cardboard tube. If you haven't got this, came from the inside of some wrapping paper, um, or you could use some toilet roll tubes, which you would have to then put together and sell a tape up to make it as long as you like. With this particular tube, I thought that was a bit too big, although if you want to make a large one, that's fine. You would need to just cut it in half, then you can make two. So you will also need some tin foil. You need some kind of stick. This happens to be a whisk thing I use, but um, the handle of a long wooden spoon would be good. Um, but just something that you can wrap things around to make a spiral. I'll show you that in a minute. You also need some lentils or rice. Um, these are way out of date, so I don't mind using them for craft. And I've just put a few in a little dish. And you need a pair of scissors. You need some sellotape to decorate your rain stick when you finish making it. You're going to need maybe some felt pens, um, or maybe some stickers. I happen to have some stickers. Or to make mine, I just used a piece of leftover wrapping paper. You could wrap it in colored wool or fabric. You can decorate it any way you like. That's the fun bit. But to get started, this is what you need to do. So you need to take your tube. You need to take your tin foil. So you need to pull off your tin foil about 
nearly twice as long as your tube. You then need to do this easily. You need to fold it in half. Just so that you get a nice crease line. And you need to cut up. You don't have to be too tight in half. So you have two nice long strips. And on just one of them, chop a bit off the end. About, oh, I don't know, about nine centimetres. So you have a long one and a short one. And then this small, hopefully in half. As long as what you end up with is bigger than the end of your tube, it'll be the right size. And the next thing you need to do is you need to take your tube, you need to put a small rectangle and push it all the way down so it fits nice and snugly to seal the end. Okay, and stick it down and smooth and it sticks nice and tightly to the cardboard tube. Okay. Just like that. That's one I've done a bit earlier. I'm going to take over from that one now. With the rest of your pieces, that's the one for later. Now you need to make a long strip. So you gently scrunch this up into a long kind of sausage shape. And I found it easier to roll it in my hands just to compress it to make it a long, fat shape. You need to do that with both of your pieces. This is where your stick comes in. You now need to wrap the tin foil around the stick. Give it a good twist. Make it nice and tight. So that when you put it off, you're left with something that looks a bit like a spiral or a spring. And you need to do that with both of your pieces. So I've got both of mine here, which I made a bit earlier. The next thing you want to do, and I used just a glass. Both of your twists together. So you don't want to make them match perfectly, but you need them to go with the spirals down inside the tube so they go all the way down the length and they go poke out the top and the next thing you need then are your lentils and just so that they don't spill all over the place i put mine on a piece of paper like that so that i could pick them up carefully and pour them into my tube. It already sounds a bit like rain. Whoop! Okay, all over the place now. It's fine. At this point, I put my hand right over the end to seal it, just so that I can test the sound. You need to tip it slowly. If that sounds about right. So then the last thing you need to do is seal the other end of your tube. You keep all those lentils tight inside. Bella tape to keep it all in place. Make sure the cellar tape sticks to the cardboard tube as well as the tin foil. Otherwise, it might just pop off. Basically, your rain stick is done. A good rattling sound. And now you just need to decorate it. I've got a piece of wrapping paper here. Um, I cut it to it wasn't it was a bit too big i've just folded the ends in i'm just going to wrap up my rain stick and use some more cellar tape to stick it down
you'll have a go. I hope you'll find yourself a tube and some tin foil and some rice or lentils and have fun making your very own rain sticks. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.